Ryan, are you okay? Oh, Judy, it's World Naked Gardening Day, and I just want to be safe. And we have something safe for you, a new episode of Garden Time. No peeking, Ryan. <laughs> Welcome to Garden Time and welcome to World Naked Gardening Day. Fortunately, it's a little wet and rainy, so I didn't have to get naked for this segment. Not really a Northwest kind of event, but we are at the beautiful Crystal Springs Rhododendron Garden, and later in the show, we'll be hearing all about this beautiful garden. We'll also be talking about clematis and containers. We'll also be going to Shriner's Iris Gardens for the beginning of bloom season. But coming up first, native shrubs. I'm at Bosquidal Natives today with Lori, and Lori, you are surrounded by native shrubs today. I love that, because that's you. <laughs> True. And so um, I think that we need to have some native plants that are kind of in the middle ground, like we have trees in our gardens, we have perennials and native perennials and things, but we need something kind of in the middle. So you're solving that problem. Well, I have here a collection of some of my favorite shrubs. This is the blue elderberry and it um, gets flat white blossoms a little bit later in the spring and followed by a, kind of a deep blue, they are pretty. almost frosty looking berry that is edible to both people and wildlife. There's another elderberry as well that's called the red elderberry. It looks just like the blue elderberry except the berries are red um, instead of blue and the red one gets its blossoms earlier and its berries earlier. And we have specific birds that come to visit the nursery only when the elderberries are ripe. Oh, that is cool. And so if you have room to have both a blue one and a red one, you can stagger the bloom period and the berry season for the wildlife by doing that. Both are really beautiful and easy to grow and they don't have a really aggressive root system. The blue elderberry prefers um, more sun okay. and the red elderberry is fine in full sun or partial sun. This what is, this down is here? called a uh, high bush cranberry and it's another shrub. Its growth habit is similar to that of a vine maple. It's about 25-30 feet tall upon maturity and it gets covered with these beautiful white blossoms and then these turn into a cluster of shiny red berries that are edible and I like them, but not everyone does because they do taste like a cranberry. It has the bitter flavor of a cranberry. I like them. Once you eat the first one, um, the first <laughs> one is a little bit shocking, but then after that, you know what to expect. I do think it'd be really good to make a sauce out of it too. Ooh, yeah. But definitely. the birds do eat them. It's the last berry that they eat. So if your high bush cranberry loses all its berries right away, <laughs> you know that your garden needs more fruit bearing uh, shrubs. Definitely. But. And this is deciduous too? It's deciduous, okay. beautiful red color, doesn't have an aggressive root system, um, beautiful along a fence line. Nice, nice. And easy to grow. Good. And then Mahonia, which is an evergreen. So this is Oregon State Flower, and this is the tall Oregon grape, Mahonia aquifolium. And it grows in sun or shade. And the books usually tell you it'll get about six feet tall, but on my <laughs> property here, um, I have some that are about 15 feet tall, but you can prune them any way you like. They get a beautiful yellow blossom that hummingbirds, bees, and butterflies all love, and then a cluster of blueberries that are edible to wildlife and people. And um, you can make a juice out of it or a sauce. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, and the root is uh, medicinal. As well. Wow, so many parts are so interesting and useful. Yeah. And then what's next? This is red currant. This is one of my favorite shrubs. It's really easy to grow and it's a must have in every garden. And it has a beautiful pink blossom. It, the color can vary from white to deep pink, but quite often they're a deep magenta pink. It's a hummingbird magnet and it grows in sun or shade. So in a perfect world, you would have one in the sun and one in the shade too. And um, you see it hiking when you're out in the woodlands. Yeah. It's really beautiful. And I'd say the mature height on it is about 10 or 12 feet okay. tall. And it's well behaved. It doesn't colonize, it stays put. Um, so it's another good one on the edge 
of the flower bed or the backdrop or along a fence. Nice. And then a rose. I don't think about a rose being a native. Well, Oregon has four native roses. This particular one is called the Woodsy Eye Rose, and it likes to grow in the shade, and it gets uh, tiny pink blossoms, and then it um, the blossom is replaced by a rose hip that's really high in vitamin C. You can make a tea out of it, or you can simply just eat it, nice. or you can just leave it for the birds. Oh. Um, but the roses colonize, so you want to make sure when you plant roses that you have the space to accommodate them, otherwise it becomes maintenance. Uh. It's, it's a great plant for erosion control because it does colonize, so it would hold a nice bank. hill mm. in place. Um, but if it's a little tiny space, um, you might find it to right. be more than what you bargained for. Right. So you included a perennial with this mix, and so what's that one? This is called goat's beard, and not everyone is really familiar with this plant. It's a shrub technically, and it dies all the way down to the ground in the winter, and then in the spring it erupts out of the ground with bright red tips, resulting in this beautiful blossom that is just beginning to open that resembles a goat's beard. Oh, fun. And so all of these plants are native to Oregon, which is so cool. And having like a little native garden in your area, in your backyard, will attract different animals. And so you've designed this really cute little display. So tell us about your little habitat there. Well, I have chipmunks and I love <laughs> my chipmunks. And we um, also have cats here that are predatory and so I wanted to create a habitat where the chipmunks could escape the neighborhood cats. <laughs> so I made all these hidey holes and I put in hollow logs and boulders and so I call it the chipmunk fort. And the chipmunks love it which is really fun and we get to see the chipmunks over there every day and it does seem to be providing them with the uh, protection from predators as well. Uh, and we saw so many birds too because the birds were coming, stellar jays were coming, it was just lovely. So you know coming out to Bosque Dell is like being in the forest so come on out and see all these little areas because you can take that ideas home. There's lots of picture opportunities here. So go to gardentime.tv, we'll click over to Lori's website and you can find out information to come out to Bosque Dell natives. Thanks so much Lori. Thank you. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. There's nothing more inviting than a garden full of beautiful clematis. And your chance to see the Queen of Vines is at the Rogerson Clematis Garden at Lusher Farm. Join us for Mother's Day in the Garden this Saturday. See our clematis contained workshop and enter to win the container. Tour the gardens and then pick up a special clematis to take home. Every garden deserves to have a clematis. To learn more about the garden and all of its many activities, go to rogersonclematiscollection.org. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world-famous Allsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once-a-decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. For 95 years and four generations, Shriners Gardens has been hybridizing and growing award-winning iris. With the largest selection available, Shriners Gardens online catalog hosts hundreds of varieties from classic bearded iris, reblooming and fragrant iris, dwarf iris, and more. Also available online, hybrid daylilies. Shriners Gardens, bringing a rainbow of color to gardens everywhere since 1935. Online at ShrinersGardens.com.
I'm at the amazing Rogers and Clematis Garden with the curator, Linda Bueller. Hi. Hi. So Linda, we come out here and we always have different topics. So what's the topic today? Well, first of all, happy Mother's Day. Oh yeah. And Thank welcome you, to Mother's Definitely. Day at the farm. Definitely. Um, so today's topic is Clematis in containers. Ah. And that's a really uh, on trend way to grow Clematis. And the reasons that you would grow them in containers are first of all, to I, have more. I love that. I think to have more because there's only so much land that you have. Right, right. Yeah, we only have an acre here. Um, and then also, if you've got clematis that have particular soil needs, and our native soil here is your basic West Lynn acidic clay, because we're up in the hills above West Lynn. Um, so you can control the soil environment when something is in a container. Oh, much more, sure. Yeah, yeah. And so when you're selecting clematis, look for ones that stay short. Definitely. This is little mini Selic, which is Estonian for mini skirt. Oh. Now you know a word of Estonian. Um, and this is going to flower. You can see where the old uh, leaf stems were from last year. But it got only this tall yeah, like 30 when inches. it flowered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when you're reading the plant tags, be looking for how tall it's going to get. You can grow larger clematis um, and wind them around oh, if you want that answer. as another career. But also, <laughs> you want to avoid things like Vera. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Up on the big trellis, and you may love it, and you may have a granddaughter named Vera, but trust me, <laughs> you're never gonna stuff that into a container. <laughs> right, that's true. Some things should not be attempted. So let's go okay. look at deadheading and some of the ways that we maintain uh, and, clematis. And really, when we come out to the garden here and there's staff here, or docents, yeah. you can really help with that in the choosing oh, yeah. of clematis oh, yeah. for the right place. Yeah, and we're really gonna be featuring them today um, at, at the plant sale, which goes on from 10 until 2. Oh, perfect. And then at 10.30, I'll be doing a just open drop-in workshop, and I'll be potting a clematis container up with some annuals and things to go oh, with it, and then we'll raffle that off later. Well, that sounds like fun. Um, so this is uh, clematis acropolis, oh, look at that. and this one, uh, when you read the label, it says it gets 48 inches tall. Okay very easy to grow in a container and um, this particular breeder Raymond Evison has made a specialty of growing clematis that are shorter uh, so we've got a white one called Ninon we've got we'll have a bunch of them um, there's an Estonian one called Pilu which means little duckling another word of <laughs> Estonian you teach us so much <laughs> and um, and it's fabulous in containers and it's pink with a red bar oh, beautiful so um but let's look at yeah, let's look um, at this so, this is clematis macropetal and mountaindale you can see it's been an early bloomer it's got some dead heads on it and so i'm going to find how long do you think that it's been in this container uh this was planted three years ago okay great oh there's my got your pruners. clippers yeah so the first thing we want to do as far as maintaining this is, and this is true for any clematis, when you see dead wood, take it off. You don't, you don't ever, ever want to wait. So just, there's no season to prune the, that kind of thing. Right. If it's dead, that's just good plant hygiene for okay. any kind of plant in your garden. If it's dead, just remove it. All right. And then we've got the dead flowers. And we're going to cut those back right to where they come out from the main stem. This is called deadheading. And for Mountaindale, we're going to deadhead. Then we're going to scatter some fertilizer on top of the gravel, and it'll be in bloom again in 30 to 45 days. Oh, that's amazing. And we amazing. always say with these April bloomers, we can have April and August if you do it right. Nice, nice. And I see that you have gravel as a top dressing, and right. is that important? Yeah. So. This plant needs really great drainage, so that's why it's in the pot. We've added that. Um, that is uh, quarter ton washed gravel. We also have that down in the soil. So our potting soil, which we do sell, um, we have it bagged up. It's not just one big pile <laughs> that everybody uses. Um, our potting soil has pumice and sand and things that we've added to it to give it really good drainage and then we top it with the gravel so that the water doesn't pool up around the crown so that it flows down into the soil and then 
Uh, the other thing about the gravel is it's easy to weed and mm. it reduces like any moss or liverwort that's gonna grow because um, on the surface, because we want clematis shoots to come up right through it. Okay. Wow, that is yeah. interesting. And you know, really all those tips, you wouldn't know because there's just a little bit different than planting, say, some other kind of a plant, putting a conifer or something in right. a container. So all those little tips, really, this is the best place to come because everybody is like such an expert on clematis care in the ground or in a container. So tell us again today, what time? Okay, um, so we'll be here from 10 until four. And also uh, Lake Oswego is doing some stuff out here, kids, uh, classes making little gifts for moms oh. so there's a lot going on at the farm it's not just just us and I also want to mention our website rogersonclematiscollection.org and if you go under clematis clematis care you'll see a handout that you can just print out on your own called clematis contained uh -huh. and it has a list of clematis that we recommend for containers and those we don't. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sure, of course. Well, also much good information. So please go to Garden Time. We'll click you over to that website. But come on out today or anytime and enjoy this beautiful garden. Thanks so much, Linda. Thanks, Judy. When Garden Time was at the Hulda Klager Lilac Gardens, we learned something about taking the flowers indoors for bouquets. And it's about helping them to last longer. And it's as easy as taking the stems and getting a hammer and just gently smashing the ends. And then you're opening up the vascular system so it brings water into the flowers to let them bloom. And if you're not comfortable using a hammer to smash on your flowers, you could also use your clippers and basically just put a slice in the ends like this vertically. So what that does is opens it up, also allows that water to come in, stick in the water, and it'll make your lilacs last longer. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, where our passion for plants has kept us rooted in this incredible community. A lot has changed since we first opened our doors, but through it all, we've remained family owned and operated, dedicated to providing our neighbors the largest selection of the highest quality plants Portland has to offer. With hundreds of new plants arriving each week, you're guaranteed to find something exciting and unique. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. I'm out here at the Crystal Springs Rhododendron Gardens. I'm with Brandon. Brandon, the gardens are stunning right now. This is rhododendron time. Absolutely, yeah, it's a great time to come out to the garden. Uh, Crystal Springs, every spring just erupts into a, a, cor a chorus of color. Uh, and everybody, I think all ages enjoy seeing the different sizes and shapes and, and colors of blooms. It's a great time to be here. Right, and rhododendrons are one of those, you know, there are so many different varieties and types. Absolutely, yeah, I mean, so whatever, if, if you're looking for a solution in your garden, uh, there's a rhododendron for that. There's tree form rhodes that, that get up to be in their old age up to 30 feet tall. Uh, and there are small ground cover rhododendrons uh, that, that most people don't really know about because they don't, they don't see them in a lot of garden settings. 
Uh, but there's really a roadie for every every situation, every everything you're looking for in your garden. And a rainbow of colors. I mean, Absolutely. The, the color, I mean, for instance, you know, what, the yeah. one behind us here. Yeah, Horizon Monarch here, it's a hybrid rhododendron. Uh, most of the rhododendrons here at Crystal Springs are hybrids. It was developed as a, a test garden for hybrid rhododendrons. It uh, didn't quite work out for that. It wasn't quite the perfect situation for that. Uh, but so it, uh, it eventually became what we can now call a display garden, a woodland okay. display garden where we showcase, you know, over 500 different varieties of hybrid and species rhododendron, uh, as well as many beautiful companion plants. Yeah. You know, and the rhododendron gardens are open to the public. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We're a public garden, so the property is a Portland Parks property. We operate the, the garden on behalf of the city. Uh, that's the Portland chapter of the American Rhododendron okay. Society. And uh, we've been doing this here for 72 years. 1950 is wow. when the garden was founded. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a great place to come. We're open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. most days. Uh, okay. Wednesdays, we open late at 1. We have intensive volunteer gardening in the Wednesday mornings. If people are interested, we're always happy uh, to have more volunteers. You can find out uh, more about that at crystalspringsgardenpdx.org. Um, and so they meet on Wednesday mornings and work with our staff here to, to keep this place beautiful. And that's what, the, you know, the admissions here, we charge admissions six days a week. Okay. Uh, admissions here go to support the garden, to upkeep and, and, and restoration of the garden, making sure that it's always beautiful and always in tip-top shape for right. our guests. Because it does take, take some maintenance. Oh, yeah. But, you know, rhododendrons in general, you know, you know, speaking of maintenance, what kind of maintenance does a rhododendron take? Yeah, you know, rhodies are really, I like to say they're really forgiving, um, especially yeah. here in the Pacific Northwest. They are, they really, what they really like, most of them is dappled sun. Uh, and, and quick draining soil, acidic soil. Um, so if you've got that on your property, you know, they do take some maintenance, especially depending on how, how you want them to look. If you want to prune them to be a certain shape or style, um, they're very amenable to that. Uh, but they also, like if you're sort of that low maintenance gardener that just wants something beautiful for that spot in your garden, you know, you get that site right and that roadie can kind of take care of itself for the right. most part. Yeah. You know, we've, we've heard some, you know, sometimes they can get, you know, a bug. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Some, they get the, you can get lace bug is probably the most common thing we hear about here. And we get it here at Crystal Springs. Okay. Um, lace bug is something that uh, we basically say, you know, it depends on what kind of gardener you are. If right. you're an organic gardener, you're probably looking at some horticultural oils as your best attempt at a solution. It may not solve the problem, but it'll try to keep it at bay for you. Um, you can do some strategic pruning to try to cut back some of that, right. uh, that lace bug affected leaves. Um, but basically, you know, the other options, of course, if you don't mind chemicals, there are chemical solutions right. that you can utilize and those, you know, readily available on market. Uh, and then, of course, if, if it just won't go away and you just can't stand it, uh, there's always another rhododendron that will ready to step into that spot and, and that is a little more resistant to lace. Right, because there are those resistant varieties that Absolutely. Are, are not affected. And always being developed. You know, there's lots of really great stuff out there uh, to look at and see for lace bug resistant. Uh, rhododendrons as well as azaleas, which azaleas, uh, which for those who may not know, all azaleas are rhododendrons. Not all rhododendrons are azaleas. <laughs> yes, which I'm glad you point, pointed that yes. out. Yes, uh, and so azaleas are often the ones that most get that, uh, that lace bug. And so uh, there's lots of really great stuff going out on the market that is really lace bug resistant as well. And you know, so people that are coming out, out to the gardens, you know, a lot of us have been here before and many times and come back all the time because the gardens are changing a lot. But somebody that's not been out to the gardens, what can they expect to see when they come out here? Oh, beautiful right now, beautiful blooms uh, primarily. But we've got six and a half acres of cultivated garden space here with an additional three acres of interior lagoons, streams, and waterfalls. Uh, we've got, you know, as I said, we've got rhododendrons of all shapes and sizes. You know, it's peak bloom season here for probably the next month or so. Right. It's a great time to visit the garden. The weather's starting to get sunnier and more beautiful. Uh, and so they can expect to see lots of blooms, lots of great companion plants. You know, we have these beautiful maples. Uh, and then, of course, wildlife. A lot of people come here to see, you know, the ducklings and the goslings yes. right about now. We've got bald eagles nesting. Uh, it's not uncommon to see a river otter or a beaver here. Um, and so we've got all kinds of things here at Crystal Springs. It's, we like to say it's an urban refuge here in the middle of the city uh, where you can just escape and, and find, your, find your zen, your inner, inner serenity. Yeah. And you guys have a great event going on this weekend. We do. So, I mean, for those who may know, years past, we've had the Mother's Day sale and show. Uh, we're still not quite ready to bring that back in person, and so there's no Mother's Day show this year, but the okay. sale will be online uh, through our website, crystalspringsgardenpdx.org. You just go there this weekend. Uh, Mother's Day weekend is when it starts, and we'll just keep selling them until they're gone. Uh, and so get on there. There'll be pictures of all the blooms of, of the types that you could purchase, and most of those will be in nice manageable sizes that you can load up to take home, uh, you know, number one, number two, number three pots. Right. 
Yeah. That's great. Well, Brandon, I appreciate all the, all the information. So if you're looking for a great outing this weekend or any time throughout, you know, any time the gardens are open. That's true. You know, they're in full bloom now and they're going to last for a while, for another month or so. So make sure you come down to Crystal Springs Rhododendron Garden. You'll get some more information online, you know, through their website. Or you can go to gardentime.tv and find out more information there, too. So, Brandon, the gardens are stunning and we're looking forward to doing a little bit more walking around. So Absolutely. Thanks for, having yeah. us. thanks for coming. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Start your new Subaru story at Capital Subaru. We are like nothing else. From the moment you step through these doors, you see it, you feel it. We do things differently here. Our people, our culture, our customer experience. Tell us what you're looking for and we'll upgrade the way you shop for Subarus. When you're just browsing, need great service, or starting your next adventure, we're always here for you. It's your story at Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. We make sure you're happy with every purchase. Whether you're a first time gardener or a seasoned professional, we'll help you be successful every time you step into your garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. I'm at Shriners Iris Gardens with Ben, and so Ben, it's great to be inside here. There's a little passing shower, but it's so cool. You can be out in the garden or you can seek cover right here. Yeah, absolutely. We have our display garden, um, and then we also have this area here, an indoor flower show and gift shop. Yeah, and so really when you come, you can kind of go to all those different places. But before we talk about the display garden, all the things going on, we had just this record rainfall in April and snow. And so how did that affect Iris? The irises are fine. Um, they're pretty hardy. Um, it just kind of delayed the bloom a bit. So they're probably about two weeks behind what they were last year this time. Uh, yeah, because I see some flowers heading up. That is so cool. And so um, when we come to the garden then, we can go out to the display garden and see everything. We can order um, the tubers, but you have plants that we could take home. Yeah, we have potted iris in gallon pots like this and then in four inch pots. And these you, you can take home. Um, a lot of them will bloom for you this spring, and then you can plant them in your garden for following blooms. Ah, that is so nice because we want to do it right away. And so, but I have iris in my garden, so what should I be doing with them right now? Right now, I mean, you, you can try to keep the slugs away <laughs> with, a, with whichever bait you prefer. Um, you can also monitor leaf spot, which is kind of like the brown fungus that will grow on the leaves. You could um, spray if you want with a systemic fungicide or you can just kind of trim the foliage as needed. Oh, um, that is good. Th those are the main things right now. And then fertilizer we do a little bit later? Fertilizer, you probably, it's a little late now because you want to do it about a month before bloom. Okay. Um, and then you could always do it a month after bloom, um, especially if it's a re-blooming variety um, or at the time of planting. Okay. But it's probably a little late now t for this, this year's bloom. Uh, but it's something really to have on hand. And I know that you have a really good formula here that you recommend. Yeah, we have fertilizer here, uh, 61010. And like I said, um, you know, typically, the rule is when the tulips are blooming, which I guess, you know, for some people they still are, but <laughs> right, right. Um, then you, it'd be a good time to apply the fertilizer. Ah. And then we have to talk about bloom season because that is upon us. And yeah. so it was always great to come out here because not just you can see iris here, but you can also see all the companion plants, which that's always, I think, beautiful to see it as a total garden. Yeah, absolutely. I think 
you can come out here and see all the varieties and see what they, they would kind of look like in your garden. Right. Um, with you know, like lupin, columbine, allium, a, a lot of companion plants. Yeah, and even with the trees and shrubs around it too. Right, right. Yeah, that yeah. is nice. Yeah. And then how do we come? Because things have changed a little bit different over the past few years. So how do we come and enjoy the gardens? Yeah, so we have tickets available for purchase online at shrinersgardens.com. You can select a date and time that works for you. Uh, we're going to be open the Friday before Mother's Day all the way through the 31st of May. And Ben, with that ticket, what is the cost? So it's $5 per person for entry. Uh, and then is there anything special going on during the week or the weekends? So weekends, we're gonna have food, we're gonna have wine tasting. Uh, Memorial Day weekend, we're gonna have an artist fair. Um, and yeah, those are the, the main things for the, the event. Well, I really think too that you can come out for many times during that month because the irises are always changing. There are always another one in bloom, a different kind of season of iris. Yeah, like we were saying, the season's a little late this year, but if you come out early, you see varieties that you don't typically see in bloom. And then you come out two weeks later, you're gonna see a whole new array of varieties blooming. Ah, nice. So it's really a long time. So really you can come out here and you can almost see the progression of iris because there's some that are bloom early, some middle, some late. So you really can have a long show of iris in your own garden. Definitely. Yeah. It's from the dwarfs all the way to the tall bearded and the tall bearded, um, some are blooming now um, and then they will continue all the way through the end of the month. And I saw that you have your catalog. Yes. And so there's catalogs here to pick up where you can go online and you really need to bring like a piece of paper and pencil and then you can kind of make all your decisions and you can kind of write down which ones you like um, because that's the, the best part is that you can get the tubers and then you can plant them later into your garden. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we invite you to come out here to Shriners Iris Gardens. You can always go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website and get all that information, but make your reservations to come out really soon. Thanks so much, Ben. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Our tip of the week comes from Ron out at Blooming Junction. Now Ron, we just purchased a tree. How do we get it home safely? Well, assuming you bought a large tree um, and brought a truck, um, what you want to make sure is that you put the pot uh, towards the cab of your truck. So, flip your tailgate up and put your tree down and slide it back. What you'll find is a lot of people, you might have to turn it to a, a flatter side. So Ron, why do we want to turn it to a flatter side? Well, you don't want to risk um, breaking off any branches or anything like that. Um, you also want to, um, when you plant your tree, plant it with some compost or planting mix. Um, you can use that um, on the side of the pot or each side of the pot um, to create uh, to keep it from rolling around in the back of your truck. Right, because we don't want to have, have the have the damage. You know, we, and we've right. all seen people driving down the road with trying to tie a tree standing straight up. Yeah, or they don't tie and it goes down anyway. Right, and then you just risk, risk more damage. Exactly. So Ron, if we have a tree that's really long and hanging out the back, do we need to be concerned about that? Um, we would provide you with a uh, flag uh, if you don't have one okay, already. Okay, so you just tie that on the tip just to make sure that exactly. there are cars and people can see Don't that, smash so. into it. So transporting a tree home safely from the garden center, that's our tip of the week. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. 
Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Well, I'm out here just outside of Damascus. I'm with Ryan from Ambrosio Robotic. Ryan, we've been slaving away mowing all afternoon, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> but not really. <laughs> right. You got this really cool tool that's buzzing around in the background. Tell me about this. Sure. Thanks for having us out. Um, this is an Ambrosio Robotic mower. Uh, they're made in Italy. They've been made in Italy for over 22 years now. But uh, this one is the model L250, and it mows this uh, acre, or nearly an acre property every day. And it's, it's totally programmable, so, and it's quiet as can be. I can't even hear this thing moving. Absolutely. But, but how does it work? Absolutely. So it's similar to actually uh, an invisible dog fence. There's a perimeter wire buried around the property. Um, the robot, initially when it's installed, grids the property, finds out where it needs to mow, how long it needs to spend in certain areas, and then after that, you just set it and forget it. So in this, you know, we're out here in the you know, middle of the day mowing, but, you know, the homeowner has this program to go off in the middle of the night. Right, yeah, normally it's not out here during the day. He actually has it running uh, between about 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. at night, and as you can hear, we're, we, we don't have it mic'd, but you can't really hear it at all. It's, it's very quiet. And there's, you know, so set up on these, you know, we're, we're looking, you know, the homeowner's over there, he's got it programmed and he's got his little smartphone out, right. you know, driving it, but it's programmed to set up to run on its own. Absolutely, yeah, you, you have control of it from anywhere, whether you're at home or on the road, it's all through an app. Uh, for Android or, or uh, iPhone, the Ambrosio Robot remote app. So from there you can set it, tell it to go in, tell it to ignore the fact that it's raining and come out and mow, which it normally would not do. Right. Uh, all that's done right from, right from your phone, yeah. You know, and then for, you know, you said, you know, it's almost an acre or more mm -hmm. of, of mowing. Right. How long does it take, take to have something like this mow? Uh, well, this one's on a three hour a day schedule, but it can actually mow for up to seven hours at a time with the batteries oh, wow. that it has. So it can clear the, most of this property in that time, but um, right now it's sort of on a three day loop where it, you know, it gets to each section uh, over time. And then, you know, how often, you know, a lot of us try to get out, you know, once a week and mow and, you know, if it's like my yard, my lawn's getting super long. Sure but you don't necessarily need to do that with this, right? Exactly, so you can have it set to mow every single day uh, and it'll just trim off the very small amount of the trimmings at the very top that, that just will break down really fast so you don't have to worry about raking up clippings and hauling them out to the curb. Right. They break down fast so it fertilizes the lawn, requires less water, saves you a ton of money. And then you know, for, for charging, you know, how does it charge? It actually will follow the wire when it's done with its session for the day, head back to the charging station and pull in, sleep for the night, you know. Get, sleep, get or in this yeah. case, it sleeps for the day and sleep for the day, nice. yes, right. So basically your lawn is pretty much always mowed. Always mowed, yes. You know, so, you know, with something that's running around with a, with a blade spinning all over the place, you know, people with pets and kids, Absolutely. What, what about safety? Sure, safety is very important with all, all robotic mowers, but with the Ambrosio especially. Uh, there's bump sensors on the robot mm -hmm. on all sides, so if it runs into something or something runs into it, it's gonna stop the motor immediately, or the blade motor. Uh, if you lift it up, it's gonna stop it immediately. Um, specifically for pets, there's also a, a feature that's really unique for Ambrosio, it's called Amico. Uh, it's a Bluetooth receiver that you actually put on your pet's collar, and if, the, if your dog or cat comes anywhere near the robot, blade stops immediately. And then, you know, you said, you know, there's a rain function. It is raining today, and we've overrode it, but it doesn't necessarily right. happen. Yeah, in the Pacific Northwest, we, we have to kind of override that. Otherwise, we just don't get, we just don't <laughs> our, get mowed. In the our lawn would never, never get that. So, 
Yeah, you know, so if somebody is, you know, is interested, what do they need you know, to know about this or where can they go to find, find sure. money? Sure. Yeah, so there's actually over a dozen different models for all types of lawns. This lawn does have some slopes to it, but we have models that'll go up to like a 37 degree slope. So oh, wow. you, you might be thinking my lawn's too crazy to, for a robotic right. mower, but there's, there's a lot of different types of models for all types of lawns. Um, AmbrosioRobot.com, A-M-B-R-O-G-I-O, AmbrosioRobot.com. Uh, you can view all the models. You can find a, a dealer uh, and an installer in your area, uh, or just give us a call. We're actually the importer. We're based out of uh, Oregon City here, and the number is 800-777-5526. That's for Max Distributing. Which is great, you know. So you know, so it sounds like there's a model, you know, for any size yard. You know, I'm sure. amazed that you can go up to this this large, and yeah. you know, even just a smaller little. You know, mine's more of a postage stamp yard, yard exactly. at home, which yep. is great for that. It's just going to keep it mowed. Yeah, so. so the smallest model is actually designed for, for lawns uh, 0.1 acres or less. So, like, you know, exactly a, a small urban lawn, something where you can just walk it out, set it there, and, and turn it on, and you don't even have to worry about mowing for that. Yeah. You know, so if you're looking to get your lawn mowed and you don't have to do it, make sure you go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to Ambrosio's site and find the model that's great you know, best for you. I just want to sit around and have a, have a drink while I watch this guy mow. Exactly. <laughs> so thanks for the information today, yeah. Ryan. Thank you very much for having us. Well, I have a fun interview today. I'm with my old friend, Harry Landers. He is a former curator of the Washington Park International Rose Test Garden. And so, Harry, I see you still have your fingers in roses. I can't get them out. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're at a nice gem of a garden here in Milwaukee. Where are we? We're at the Sarah Height Memorial Rose Garden uh, at, with the Milwaukee Senior Center, part of Clackamas County. I love this place. I know we've been here a couple times and I think it's just lovely because it has beautiful roses, but it's just a place to kind of sit and just relax and enjoy. Yeah, yeah it really is. And it's kind of a secret. <laughs> Not many people come here. Ah, but we don't want it to be a secret anymore. So you really <laughs> have to come here this year. So Harry, you know, this year has been a very kind of crazy springtime. So what do we have to expect from our roses? What should we be doing with them? Well, it's time to fertilize. Mm. Uh, go to your independent garden center and get some rose food and uh, yeah it's time to start spraying too. Yeah because that's something that happens but really you can take care of that. Yeah yeah and get it before the diseases get in. So you mentioned spraying what should we be doing what kind of spray? Right now uh, we got to spray for black spot and then mildew will be coming later. Ah. And so really at our independent garden centers they could help us with that. Yes. And then um, I see that there's a beautiful mulch here, so really that's a great idea too. Oh yes, uh, we have it put on every year. And boy, does it help with the weeds. Oh, that is nice, we want all that help. Oh yes, <laughs> we sure do. And then because it's been so cold, can we expect the same bloom time or maybe it'll be later? I think it's going to be later. It depends on what May brings us. Uh, right, right, it's an open month already. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I'm so excited to hear that all the kind of rose festivities are coming back again, the rose parade and everything, but there's a fun contest coming up. Yes, the Royal Rosarian uh, Garden Judging Contest. It's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people enter it. And what's nice about entering it, uh, it gives you the incentive to get out there and do what you've, well, I should really do this. <laughs> I'd like to do this. It gets you out there, gets you, uh, uh, to put in the new plant or the new feature or whatever, put down the mulch, and then it's done for the year. That is true. And so you can, um, to join with this contest, what do you do? Is there, there many categories? Or? There, oh, there's many from as few as 12 roses. There are entries for people who have just roses, others who have roses planted, or perennials or things like that planted with their roses. So uh, there's a lot of different options. There's option for uh, senior citizens and disabled. Uh, there is uh, for commercial. It's, it's really easy to do. So Harry, if your garden is chosen as one of the winners, what do you get? Do you get something? You get one of these. Oh, wow. And this goes in your garden, and then uh, everybody can see that your garden has won. I have three of these stakes, and I get a lot of comp comments from people walking by. Ah, that is so nice. So it's a great uh, thing to have. It is, it is. It really, you work hard in your garden. It's nice to get a little bit of a um, consideration for that. It really is. And then is this open to the whole state, or is there just a lo location? 20 miles from Pioneer Square. Oh, okay, so. So somewhere in that radius. 
So Harry, where can people go to get all this information? To the Royal Rosarian website. It's real easy to find, easy to fill out. Oh, that is good. You know, please go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the Royal Rosarian website and you can maybe get your garden into the contest today. Harry, thanks so much. Thank you, Judy. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world famous Allsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once a decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle, develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Peonies, bold and beautiful, an old favorite, but ever new, and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. I'm out here at Sagawa Nursery. I'm with Brian. Brian, it's spring. Might yes, not it quite feel like it today, but spring is coming. Yeah, and we're getting ready for our pots in our containers. It's around the corner. We know that. Uh, but yeah, it seems to be one of the most asked questions about you know how to put together a planter and things like that. And I still go back to the three basic rules: trying to find something as an accent piece, right? Not necessarily your uh, your thrillers and the fillers to fill in the space and spillers to go off the sides but basically it's all you know creating uh, some kind of interest it actually can do many things and things to consider the sun location uh, how much sun are we going to get um, shade I, we can find things that right. will go into partial or full shade pretty basic though foliage colors flower colors textures right. and uh, after that I think it's pretty easy to put together one. Right, you gra you grabbed a bunch of nice nice samples here. Yeah. You know, you started out. So yep. this must be your, you know, your kind that's, of focal point here. Yeah, so yeah your, that's Egyptian papyrus. Uh, I believe it's King Tut, and uh, that is exactly what it's going to be: is some kind of uh, foliage texture, contrast with everything else, and you got it. It would look good with anything in there, I think. Right, and then you have some kind of your your medium, your yep. you know, your fillers. Yeah. Yep. Yo, know, this little guy, I love love him. Yes. He's, he's a great one It just one seems here. to be always popular. And that's, we, I used to go, cigarette plant, you know, they used to call it the right. cigarette butt plant or whatever. But uh, yeah, more than ever, last, say, five to six years, it just becomes a good mainstay where everyone should have and, some of that. And these guys there. just bloom and bloom They do and bloom. bloom. Many different colors to offer. Uh, most of them, though, are that orangish red with that white little ending there. And uh creates quite an interest plant. Right. And I, I saw this one over here, you know, we all of us oh, know yes. kind of the other yep. little osteosperm on daisies, yep. but the, the flower on this African guy. Is, daisies. Well, they come in like, they're coming out with 10 different colors every year. So it's getting kind of hard to keep up with them, but right. it does like full sun. It does bloom all, it, it blooms its little tail off and it's a great little performer. Right. And full on sun the, on that one. You know, coleus row is another great one. That you know, yeah. Talk about bang, bang for your buck. Oh yeah, you know, the coleus is a, a good one, one for uh, like sun to parshan. Um, 
they cut again so many different foliage colors i'm sure there'd be one to fit anyone's uh uh color palette very right you easily. have a rainbow of color oh, colors yes. over there yep. easy know? to grow no bugs no diseases on it uh watering is you know anything with that watery stem on that we always like to say keep it on the drier side right but outside of that it should be a very great little companion plant for everything else right you know and another one that i'm just amazed with every year uh -huh. are the are the petunias oh and, man and yeah. the colors i mean that you're you're coming up with on these i things. just i can't keep up with it i mean there's so many different kinds and then you know different classifications uh, it's just fun to see all these new colors right. coming out with. It's like an artist uh, is at back home doing something to create this right. stuff, but uh, it is amazing. And you guys have, you know, just a sea of color in the background of all this stuff coming in now. Yeah, it you know, is. And for the, you know, the gardener that, you know, a lot of us do, do the color, but there's other options for doing pots and containers. Like this guy oh, right yeah. here. This is a totally different look. That would be a totally different look, like a little mini landscape, or for the people that don't really, and this would be uh, like a seasonal interest. You would never have to really uh, worry about patching or filling in. It's pretty much plant this, walk away, and let it do its thing. Uh, this one, you'd never have to really, you can add different things, grasses, right. little dwarf grasses, but. Right, and even uh, like you did with the statuary. area. Right. right? Throwing in little uh, interest things. It could be a little vacation trip. You, know, you found a little piece of driftwood, whatever. But it's like a little uh, mini landscape in, a, in a, some kind right. of a pot. Yeah. yeah, so if you're looking for you know, inspiration on what to do in your patio, whether it be a container full of bright colored flowers or a container full of just a landscape on its own, make sure you come out to Sagawa Nursery, talk to Brian, talk to his staff, and get something inspired for you. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We're proud of our industry-leading, state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Hey everybody, Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden, and I wanted to share with you my top five shade hanging basket combinations. This one with the reds, oranges, and the coleus, absolutely beautiful. But also, the purples and blues with blue terrina, purple fuchsia, and a little bit of white trailing wandering dew, this combination is awesome. This next combination features a begonia called Funky Red. It is absolutely gorgeous, and with the red and purple of Dark Eyes Fuchsia, and finally a little bit of trailing coleus, <laughs> makes this one of my favorites. One of the new begonias for this year, Peachy Keen, I mean, is absolutely stunning. With a little bit of Golden Creeping Jenny and Purple Tritoscantia, this monster is absolutely beautiful. Last but not least is this beautiful pink combination with Nanook Tritoscantia, Pink Impatience, and one of my very favorite fuchsias, Tom West. At Bauman's, we work hard to have some of the best shade baskets in the business, but don't wait too long because these beauties go fast. We'll be open this Sunday for Mother's Day and one more Sunday, and after that, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Make sure you check us out on YouTube and all of our social media, and we look forward to seeing you soon. We have all been enjoying our gardens this spring and you know if you need compost, you need mulch, Grimm's Fuel is the place to come and I'm with Jeff Grimm and Jeff, we've been here the last couple years seeing your new facility and you have a lot of compost and mulch. Welcome back, we do have a lot of compost and mulch <laughs> and it's all ready to, ready to go. And so why do we want to use that? If we can just kind of remind people why you want to use compost and then why do you want to top dress? Sure, the, uh, our garden mulch is a garden compost mulch, mm -hmm. made from the stuff that comes into the yard debris recycling center. So the people bring it in with their vehicles and then we grind it up and compost it for four to six months. And then we screen it out into a fine grind black compost. Yeah, and it's all ready for us to use. And really all those beneficial things, it adds texture, it adds beneficial nutrients. 
really, it's great for our gardens. Yeah, compost is a lot more nutritious and better for your plants and soils than a straight bark dust. Right. Where straight bark dust looks great, but it doesn't have a lot of nutritional value in it, as opposed to the compost. Right. But then if we like that look on top, some people love the look of bark dust on top, and it, it's a totally different look. That's true. The compost has a tendency to be very dark brown to black in color, or the bark dust you can get reddish brown, or the older stuff that's been in the stockpile kind of it turns a darker brown in shade. Yeah, that is nice. And then even if you want to do some other kind of, maybe you want to do a pathway, you have gravel too. We have gravel and cedar chips is also good for playgrounds, oh, nice. yeah. uh, pathways, under structures, playground structures, stuff like that. Yeah, and I like that you that we can bring our debris too. I know you kind of touched on that, but you know sometimes it just doesn't fit in our yard debris canisters for the city. So really, you can bring it here and and get rid of it, and then you reuse it. That's true. Yeah, it's a good kind of closing the loop, the recycling loop. So the Tualatin Recycling Center here at the corner of Highway 99W and Seipel Road is open seven days a week for U-Haul. And then people can drop off their yard debris and pick up that a load of compost or bark dust or rock and take it home and finish off their landscape projects. Right, and then, you know, I have a truck, so it's kind of nice, but if we don't have a way to get it home, you can help with that. Yep, we also have the delivery service. So one or two days notice and so we can deliver you compost or bark dust or whatever you need and dump it in your driveway and then you can hire some boat folks or get your shovel out <laughs> and start spreading it around your, your yard. That's a fairly short notice, one or two days notice. If you want it installed, we can also help you with that. We have blower trucks that come, come out and blow. That service is very popular and it's a little more backed up, so you're going to want to think it more in advance if you want to get that service. Uh, and you know, we have to think forward because I think we were all caught unawares with the, the ice storms and the power outages. So you also have firewood. That's true. We have uh, firewood. That, comes in from log trucks and also from the storm surge that we had in February. We got quite an influx of wood that we were able to recycle and turn into firewood. So if you need firewood, don't wait till the winter. Don't wait till next ice storm because uh, then you're going to be in trouble. Uh, get it well in advance, like September, October. Get your firewood stacked up then. It's all ready and seasoned and ready for you when you're ready to, when you need it. I think that's really good advice because we want to be prepared again. So really you have so many different needs that can get fulfilled at Grimm's. You can get your compost, you can get your top dressing, and you can get your firewood for next winter. So please go to gardentime.tv and you can click over to the Grimm's website and find out all the information to come out here and have your garden healthy and beautiful too. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks for coming by. Thank you for watching Garden Time. Make sure this weekend you go out and visit your gardens and your independent garden centers. And we want to wish all the moms out there a happy Mother's Day. Ryan and I thank you for watching and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. What are you doing? You said to follow you. Follow us on Facebook. Oh, man. Well, we invite all of our viewers to follow the Garden Time page on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, you'll find links to stories, you'll see upcoming events, and you also might even find a funny joke or two. So don't forget, go to the gardentime.tv webpage and click the link for Facebook. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.